Hello, hello everyone, Anura here, bringing you a spicy modern deck I put together for an FNM this past weekend, what I affectionately call Snake Pod. I want to preface this by saying I don't have the most extensive collection in modern, so a lot of my card choices are going to be based on just what I have and budget. To begin building the deck, I knew I wanted to make some kind of blue-green value strategy around Ice Fang Codal. It's one of my favorite new and just honestly cards in general, and I like about everything about it. I'm a pretty big Simic player. In the same way Neoform really tickled my fancy, I thought it was really cool that they just made a card that was a single activation of Birthing Pod. And I wanted to see just how good that really is. Now, as far as sort of duplicates to these two cores, um, Coiling Oracle is, you know, not as impressive as a body as Ice Fang Codal, but the ability to ramp potentially off of that draw is pretty huge. Um, Eldritch Evolution is in some ways better than Neoform, having the flexibility to get any creature of two greater or less um, means that I can potentially get up to four drops and even two and one drops if I want off the snakes. So this was where I sort of began building from. So with this core game plan of sacrificing snakes, to tutor up three and four drops mostly. I had to think of what three and four drops could just win the game. With this in mind, Magus of the Moon immediately came to me as the three drop of choice. I think Blood Moon is just one of the best hate cards in the format. Turns out stopping people from playing their cards can be pretty good. For the four drop, I liked Prime Speaker Vanifar. I think she got a bit of a buff in Throne of Eldraine secretly with a much cleaner combo chain that you can just kill someone with off of a one drop. So this combo chain with Prime Speaker Vanifar consists of four parts. Again, starting from a one drop, sacrifice to get the two drop corridor monitor that untaps Prime Speaker Vanifar. Sacrifice that Corridor Monitor for a 3-drop Renegade Rallyer that returns the Corridor Monitor to the battlefield, untapping Prime Speaker Vanifar. Sacrificing the Renegade Rallyer for a 4-drop Restoration Angel that blinks Corridor Monitor to untap Prime Speaker Vanifar, who can then sacrifice the Restoration Angel for the 5-drop Kiki-Jiki Mirror Breaker. That can then make infinite copies of the Corridor Monitor as they untap him each time. Hasty, that can attack for lethal. So I mentioned that this chain does have to start from a 1-drop. Well, what 1-drops do I play? Currently, 4 Bird of Paradise and 1 Giver of Runes is in my deck. Though, I definitely think there should be that the Giver of Runes isn't necessary, first off, and that there should be some number of Gilded Gooses as a secondary one-drop. The Mana Ramp from the Birds is pretty strong, being able to have access to colors if I powered an early Blood Moon without basics is really nice, and Birds Forever. It's a great card. So I decided how I was going to win with this deck, but I still needed to fill out my game plan a bit more with what am I going to do if I don't think I have the all clear to go for the kill, if I suspect some creature removal, or I've already lost a creature, or I need to answer some problem permanent so I don't die the next turn or let the opponent run away with the game. This, I figured, was where my three drop creature suite would come into play. I could get these off of Neoform or Eldritch Evolution on my snakes, and additionally even Eldritch Evolution on a birds. With this in mind, I was thinking Soul Herder could provide some good value by blinking a snake or such. I played two of them because I figured that out of any of the three drops, if I just like follow a snake up on turn three with that, it would probably be my favorite line. Deputy of Detention as a answer to any 
problem permanent. Knight of Autumn, they can answer artifacts or enchantments. Additionally, it can just gain life or be a bigger dude. Tireless Tracker for some long-term value from fetch lands and such. And Eternal Witness to buy back potentially lost pieces of my combo. So if you've been counting along with me, that's 33 cards I've decided on out of the 60. I figured with a mana curve like this, I probably wanted to run around 23 lands, so that left me with just four non-land cards left. I picked three mana morphos because I figured having a way to filter mana under Blood Moon or get that two extra red to play Kiki Jiki would be kind of nice. I didn't actually have a fourth. So I went for another tutor option of Scavenging Ooze as a potential answer to Graveyards. I do think the Scavenging Ooze is a little too slow now, and that Mana Morphos should probably just be a playset of Once Upon a Time. But I'm not made of money, so I wasn't able to just pick them up last minute. I knew I wanted a good number of snow-covered basics, with a big part of my game plan being Magus the Moon, and obviously for Ice Fang Codal as well. And I eventually settled on six total, three forest, two islands, one plains, because green is my strong primary color with double green sources and Eldritch Evolution even. Blue is a secondary with Coiling Oracle, Ice Fang Codal, Neoform, all wanting blue and Vanifar, of course. And white is a small tertiary with just a handful of cards that need it. I use 10 fetches to support these basics. If, again, budget wasn't an option for me, I would have four Prismatic Vista, four Misty Rainforests, and two Windswept Heath. As it is, I only have a single Misty Rainforest and Prismatic Vista, so I ran three Flooded Strands, four Windswept Heaths, and a single Wooded Foothills in addition to those. With 16 of my lands decided, I settled for my last seven slots to be on five more fetchable lands and two Horizon lands. I had two breeding pools, as of course blue-green are my most important colors, a single Timble Garden to cast white things, and a single Stomping Grounds to be able to cast Magus of the Moon, should I draw it. Dryad Arbor was an additional fetchable creature, because I figured it would be relevant to be able to turn a stranded Neoform or Eldritch Evolution into a real card. Uh, also, Dryad Arbor gives me something else to potentially start going uh, for a win with Banifar. Waterlogged Grove, the Horizon Land of Choice that sacrifices itself to draw a card, I thought would be nice to be able to turn too many land drops into actual resources. So I am playing two of those. If I do end up cutting the Manamorphos for Once Upon a Time, I think it would be very relevant to play to mm, the Green Red Filter Land. I think it's called Firelit Thicket, potentially in place of the Waterlog Groves, but until I get Once Upon a Time, I'll be sticking with this. A large chunk of my sideboard was taken up by Silver Bullet Creatures to Tutor for. Burriton Forge Tender as an answer to red decks, burn things. I would obviously like this to be Core Firewalker. It would do much better just sticking around against those decks. Ramanap Excavator, I was thinking would be good against like land destruction strategies or just in a grindy game where I want to rebuy my fetches or waterlogged groves. I don't really think this card is needed though, so I'll be probably replacing it with something else. Remorseful Cleric is an answer to graveyard strategies. If I decide that having a creature just stick around on the board 
would be more relevant than one that just can sacrifice itself to immediately wipe the graveyard. Yixlid Jailer would be my choice, so mm, it's a toss-up for me between those. Shalai, Voice of Plenty, I thought would be good versus, like, discard removal strategies, but it might just be too slow and not really worth tutoring up, so that could be changed. Phyrexian Revoker, I think, is really necessary against Planeswalkers or other problem problematic activated abilities. Lavinia, Azorius Renegade as a way to stop combo decks doing their thing or people cheating out spells. Collector Oof to answer artifact strategies and such. Plague Engineer to stop go-wide token strategies. To round out the 15, we got 7 spells, non-creature spells, 4 Veil of Summer, against discard decks um, and counter decks. One evolutionary leap, but I don't think, I think that should be some more value-oriented creature. And two path to exiles to interact with creatures on the other side. So there you have it. That's my spicy new modern brew of Snake Pod. If you enjoyed this video and this deck, I'm hoping to make more videos in the future of my ventures with this deck, hopefully, and other decks like it, and potentially some Hearthstone content as well. Just let me know what you think in the comments below, and if you really enjoyed it, like and subscribe. Thank you so much. Anira, hopping off.